Welcome, guys, to podcast episode number 34. And today I have with me Kana Valk Genizad, surprise podcast for the Overlord collab. I'll let them introduce themselves in that order, and then we'll get started. So, Kana, start us off. Hello, hello, everybody. I am Kana. If you don't know me, I am a E7 content creator for YouTube and for Twitch. Uh, I do a bunch of rta related stuff but also cover news and also do some guides on occasion and yeah happy to be here i have not seen gabe in a long time so i was more than happy to to stop by and see how he's been i'm glad to be here what's good boys um i'm valk i i'm i'm masters in both game modes for tft i mean um i have two legend frames for rta and uh I'm here because my high school bully threatened to take my lunch money if I didn't come today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's here under duress. Poor guy. Uh, I'm Genizad. Uh, yeah, I play a lot of Epic 7. We all know this. <laughs> the guy I think that we all knew that streamed the most hours of Epic 7 ever in the past. Yeah, I cut that down a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Things and, uh... are different now. Yeah, well, welcome to 34th Podcast. I'm back with old friends. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. And uh, this is not going to be like the past, I guess. It's just me random ramblings because I haven't been in the game in a while. I don't know some of the things, so some of these guys will fill me in on some of these things. But we'll just get into the you ever first heard topic. of uh, huh? MLU Fiend? You ever heard of that character? Yeah. I, I, even, I in actually, past, even in the past. I, I, I came back to pull for her. Oh, we, we okay. had to like get you caught up, right? Um, I last I remember you were around season five, yeah. It's season thirteen now, so there's about eight seasons Ooh, of material. Oh, to come wait, on. what? God, eight seasons? Eight seasons? Yeah. It's been that yeah, yeah, two yeah. years. It's about four seasons a year, right? Like three oh, month is yeah. like one cycle, right? So four seasons a year. It's been two years, so roughly, you know, eight seasons, right? So, it, it, so if Gabe hasn't played for eight seasons, insane. that means. He doesn't. Well, I'm sure he knows of her, right? He he wasn't here for Hua Young. Hua Young. Oh, that. Lo oh my God, you weren't even here for no, Hua wow. Young. No, wait, wait. Moly. I was. Hua Young was a. Hua Young was the one that got nerfed, right, to the ground. Yeah, she was yeah. so good yeah. that basically, yeah. um, if she came out today in her release date, she basically still kicked the fuck out of every OP meta character right now. I remember that. I logged in because I heard someone message me, told me she was getting. Uh, a recall. I logged in. I recalled her <laughs> to get who's that blue girl that goes fast, that goes Lua, Lua or something. Lua, yeah, yeah, Lua, yeah, yep, yep. yeah. yeah. I, I went for and I, I redeemed her. Never pull, didn't pull back a Hua Young. So yeah, Damn. that's but, crazy. It's been so long what? that Hua Young came out, got nerfed, and got rebuffed before you rejoined E7. <laughs> Like, I've never heard of a character that's gotten nerfed and rebuffed before you... Re that is a long, long time. Holy yep, moly. She it's been so game. long. Holy crap. Yeah, she 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 took over the game for, what, nine months, I remember, right? She came out Feb, got nerfed November. And then after that, right after they nerfed her, we're like, boys, the game is saved. And they're like, hey, we got this Genshin-ass looking character. Enjoy Lua. <laughs> so that, He didn't that even really have to experience her. Us. Lua came out, and then he didn't even have to play against her for two years, and then they finally made her counter after two years. Dude, he's yep. so smart. Okay, he's omnipotent, well, but he's got a good now. future vision. State yeah, of the game. Out. Are we actually still on Cleave, or what's the what's the meta? Like, how is the, the game meta? like? Now? I mean, it, it like kind of just just recently shifted to like Cleave aggro again, literally because Genoa, basically, but like. Okay. Alpha. Before that, it was literally just people spamming Laya every game and like tanking down. How bad is it yeah. if I didn't pull for Genua? Uh, he's... Mm, I mean, it's kind of bad, but like, if you're get not by. really competitively playing, like you're just going to champ every season. Yeah, we like... know you're casual. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 That works. That works. Jenna, I'm assuming you're not a fan of the uh, the Genua naming conventions, right? You, oh, you kind of really hate care. when community likes to get a little too stupid with it. I don't really care much. <laughs> yeah, because really... uh, so 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 uh, Gabe, the the meta with him is you're basically calling him any J starting name, as long as it's not Genua. So I, I, I've seen like Johnny, I've seen Jackie, I've seen 
the one we're stuck on for a bit right now is Jamal. We've been calling him Jamal, Jamal? for a bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you you have Joshua. I've even seen a few Jenna's ads here. Yeah, Joe Taro is a pretty popular one. Joe Nuichi. So we have another. a new naming convention now. We're not just. I don't going see to... any of these names. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because I like to get stupid. Dude. So 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 people. I don't know. My community gets a. We we get a little creative. Joaquin, yeah. Your community gets a little wild. I see. <clears throat> yeah, we, we we like to have a little bit of brain damage, especially now that we're in a meta where drafts are no longer determinant. Hmm. What do you mean by that? You, you know how before, right? You do an account review for someone, you look through their logs, you, you you look at like drafts and you're like, okay, you lost because of this. You lost, you won because of X or Y reasons, right? Yeah. So right now we're at a point where Cleave is the only like, it's the last bastion of sanity, basically. Like if you're a cleaver, you have the tournament in drafts, right? You can look at it, you're like, oh, you should have done this. You should have banned this, right? But if you are a standard player, you're playing ML Landy and ML Yuffie, and these are just Elvis bruisers that snowball the game, right? And when they have full fighting spirit, the game could end one of two ways. Wait, and... so in tank down meta, I guess ML Landy and ML Yuffie are like a staple. Like if you don't draft them, you're bought, like screwed. So um, they, they're yeah, more anti-aggro overall, I guess. Mm. Like in standard, they're good, but like they're mostly anti-aggression and they're just complete RNG. So every single game with them is literally just an RNG fest. If you don't know what you're doing in a draft and you pick them, there's a decent chance that you win, even if you screwed up every single part of your entire draft, pretty much. You can literally just win games against people that drafted almost perfectly against you. So you just... You just draft them and you can pray. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know how before there was a while where when I first started, people just picked Red Ravi and prayed, right? Uh, yeah. Fire Ravi and you pray. The evolution. She one v fours anybody. The, okay, so this is the evolution of the. I see. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. The, yeah the this is just the version. like Fire Ravi on crack. Okay. Okay. Do you like the meta? Do you guys like this meta or how the no. game is? No. Okay. Um, it's actually so bad that I kind of want to quit. <laughs> Dude, Weathering Way is coming out, coming out soon, bro. Wait, uh, yo, so, I see you guys been on the I'm AFK saying. Journey grind. <laughs> Dude, that game is all... I didn't think that game was going to take off as well as it did, but every single person... The game's I actually... Seen, I mean, yeah, it's well, not... Well, I mean, every not, single honestly. person and their dog got sponsored to play the game, so... Like, yeah, yeah, that's why... I, like, I can't believe... Dude, they they must have spent, like, an arm and a leg on advertising, man, because, like, every I'm, single it's person... It's actually a decent game. It like yeah. actually has a lot of polish and work put into it. So, hmm. hey, you're not wrong. They spent a lot on the advertisement. I'll sit oh, yeah. on the toilet. I'll scroll TikTok or something. Boom, AFK journey. Yep. I'll scroll Instagram. Boom, AFK journey. I'm like, what is this game? It keeps showing up. I see you guys talking about. It. I'm like, huh? I see. This is the new game. <laughs> this is the newest ambitious collaboration in mobile gaming across all fields and genres they're like they're like the first recent gacha game too that like had a like a like a decent background too they're not just like out of left field like they had afk arena and that game was mm -hmm. like it wasn't you know like the biggest gacha or anything but like apparently it made like a lot of money back in the day because you know i, I guess, remember like, hearing about that game. I didn't play it. though yeah, so they had like a bit of like a base to work on, but like, dude, even when like they like reached out to me like a cup like five or six months ago, and I was like, ah, it's another sponsor game, and then it got closer, and then I heard people go out of their way to go like, yeah, I wanted to try this game. I'm like, is this like a joke? Is this a bit like it has? It's it's, it's like a AFK like gacha game. What are we talking about? But yeah, like I guess you know a lot of different people are interested in it because it's casual, but. Hey, hey, all I'm saying is one month, man. Weathering Waves comes out. Like, I don't know if you guys had the the pleasure of looking at all the, the different betas. I know Jenna played it a lot, but oh my god, man. I I didn't think it was even gonna come out in May or like, you know, in any time soon, because I think normally we get a third closed beta or something like that. And then we have like a big break in between, but then they just they dropped a bombshell on arguably like actually wait. The timeline of it, I think, was that E7 had an announcement or they had like a Maroon Mail that they were announcing 
the night that Wuthering Waves also announced their release, and it was like the worst night feeling, or like the worst feeling night for E seven believer, like E seven believers, I'd ever heard of or had ever seen. Because everyone's like, "Oh my god, we're gonna," you know, they can announce a big for E seven about like everyone was like <laughs> E seven if if they don't release the collab, everyone was gonna like mauled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I mean, I like I don't know how you guys treated the whole like uh the teaser teasing leading up into it but people didn't think that it was going to be a collaboration because you know we we saw like this 41 teaser and everyone's like oh my god the 41 something something from overlord like the original members i still of the don't Guild. even know if they planned that like did they even plan that like 41 was relating to overlord or whatever like was it just a load of bit like i honestly can't even believe it i don't like so i don't even know supposedly like it wasn't even technically 41 like in overlord it's like 42 but they don't what? count one or something like one of the original no. members like i i don't know what I'm it was sure it's 41 was it? in any case i i thought it was i don't know i think that their planning of it was still a little weird they did like a teaser of a teaser like they announced the friday before that there was going to be big news on april fools and honestly if they didn't uh, release the April Fools like early that weekend instead of like waiting until April first. I think like literally the entire community would have like set fire to <laughs> like their E seven accounts that Monday. It was it was horrific. Like I had never seen so many people. Even like the official E seven Discord, like the stove posts, like everyone was posting. Like <clears throat> if you think this is a good idea, that like teasing and hyping all this us like all this stuff up for nothing was a was a good idea. Like we don't have room for pranks. Like Smoggy, don't mess with the like it was so it was so hostile like you could you could Whole... like feel the tension in the air well, it was very it, very it's because you know. smallgate like they, they don't understand like some of their advertising stuff is just ridiculous they'll like be like wait till this date and then everyone's like oh man what's happening on this date and then that date is like a teaser saying wait for another date bro just tell us like one date to wait for and people will just wait for that one if they just said wait for four one everybody like I don't know, a month ago, people would have been like, oh man, what's happening at 4 and this is going to be a really big one, rather than like stringing us along. I, I think that's kind of what pissed people off, because it was just like, they kept stringing people along, and they're like, okay, we're not announcing anything. Like, just like just give us something. So it just kept pissing people off. Yeah, I think there's also like a cultural aspect to it, right? Because, um, you know, you have one, on one side, you have a Korean game dev that's just trying to hype up this promotion. And on the other side, like, bro, April 1st is just the day where like, People do like Reddit and Discord pranks for a day and nothing actually happens and you're not supposed to believe everything you see on the internet. You're literally supposed to not believe everything, right? True. And I think there was a cultural disconnect, but I also don't think Smaugay went that far to to just quote unquote play a prank, right? So I was like, all right, let's wait and see, right? But well, I, I think people were really, really, really waiting for and like ra raring to go for some content. So I, I, I kind of get it from both sides. I, I just yeah. thought hey. that like, it just, I don't know. It felt weird that their teasers weren't even like, they never came out and addressed whether like the teasers were for something. So they had like teasers throughout the week. They're like something, something about shadows. And then you couldn't really tell if they were alluding to something different. Like, in, you know, like people were saying like, oh, eminence because it has shadows. But then politics got like announced or like they did a reveal. So then they thought it was that. And then they had like another announcement or like a teaser on Twitter where like, you know, we had the Bellion screen where everything was going wrong and like wrong in red. And then there was like another cipher where it was like he waits in the depths or something like that. And no one had any idea what these were pertaining to. And they were like really, really like digging deep. Uh, I feel like to tease these things. Whereas like if they just said like, hey, guys, or if they had done from beginning what they did for the actual teaser of the collab, which is like, wow, guys, it's a red eye in the background. Like, I wonder what that's a teaser for which is much easier to kind of understand. At least people wouldn't have, like, you know, had their pitchforks out the whole time, which is, at least for me, like, what I read was, like, kind of the issue. It was just, like, bad teasing, or they weren't, like, specific for, like, what they were teasing well, it's because for. It's because nobody thought they'd actually do a collab. It's been, like, True. a million years since we got a last collab, and the last one was K-pop. It was trash. So, like, nobody even expected it. Like, people have been asking for Overlord for, like, literally years. Like, that was, oh, anytime people ask, like, what collab would you want to see? That was always one of the most asked for, which kind of surprised me. Yeah. Honestly. But, like, yeah. um, so people kind of probably just weren't even hoping anymore. And also, it had been so long since the collab, people were like, oh, do they even do them anymore? Are they going to rerun these collabs? Like, what's going on? 
That's fair assessment. So. I remember the last like what was it called? It was like ReZero and Slime. There was a whole fiasco with that too, where like mm-hmm. it felt like I forgot which one was which. What one of them was like felt like it was rushed, just to like. Man, appear. you're like a time capsule. <laughs> yup, yup. That, that's, that's, that's why that it's is, so good. Like, it long ago. What do you mean? Uh, the, the, Dude, you the, little bro the, missed like three collabs or something. <laughs> Didn't even have like Subaru in it. Like it was just Rem and Amelia teleported in. Oh no, where are we? We gotta go back to wherever the fuck we came from, and then yeah, yeah. People didn't like the story. All right. Well, we'll talk about some of the some of that stuff in a bit. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Um. On, on topic, state of the game, current meta. Uh, you know, you you have some people who are good this meta, but like. If you ask majority of the people, um, generally, I think the overall overwhelming sentiment is that this meta is much more disliked compared to previous meta just because it's so dictated by RNG. And it's like, well, I did this draft and I did everything I could. Time to hope for the best, right? And, and from like, yeah, and from like, a, <clears throat> you know, a, a both a competitive and like somebody who makes content, like it doesn't make for as good content. It's just, I'm sitting here with my chat and we're just hoping my landy counters and my landy doesn't counter it's like oh man we don't want to see this right yeah like, what, what are you gonna do damn this is the i mean i'm I, i'm hoping yeah. oh sorry go ahead jenna oh well i was just gonna say i think another big thing is just that um th- this is what i always say is that <clears throat> a lot of people say well you guys think that every meta is like the worst meta and I think every meta is the worst meta. I think it literally has just been constantly getting worse with a lot of the metas. Because if you don't fix problems from a year ago, then those problems still exist, but then you add new problems like ML Yuffie and ML Landy, etc. But then you still have to deal with Lua, you still have to deal with ML Lilius. Like, if you're not fixing things from all this time ago, then it's just piling on a, essentially like the foundations of a house on like, you know, like, I, I, I agree with you. It's just you. continuously just building more upon something that's already so flawed. And Smoggy never addressing those things makes it so that each meta just feels progressively tighter on the unit pool, tighter on like what you're allowed to actually play or draft, what's fun. And in this m- most recent meta, it's probably like there's literally like two things people draft. They're either drafting that like Flitica cleave thing because they just spam copy it and they have 300 speed Flitica, or they're just picking like Emo Yufin, Emo Landy, like tank down with Laia. That's basically what every single person does. Yep. And it, I mean, it, it's, it's, I'm, I don't know how you guys necessarily perceive the new characters. I don't know. I don't even know if we're getting Shalt here actually for, for the end of the season. We're not. But I was hoping that like, uh, I mean, originally, I didn't think the Overlord collab was was even going to be in the end of season, but I think they pushed think they it pushed back. Him so back they, yeah. yeah, so now they're going to have... I think we're getting Ainz and Albedo, but even, like, if you were to argue that, like, maybe Ainz could push a little bit of the meta or push the envelope... No way Ainz would, bro. <laughs> dude, there's no way... Like, even even if that... That was... Dude, that's my that's my hope. I, I think 50,000 fixed damage is so funny as a concept. But like, if you look at Albedo, I feel like there's just no like I don't know how, if you guys if you guys were pulled up on it. Or I think anything, Albedo but... is probably better than Ions, honestly. I, oh, I, right, really? Well, I, I think Shelt here is overhyped, and I think Albedo's like underrated. Okay. I, I think um, Albedo like we have to see how it actually works in game. But like a lot of people are like, oh, her damage isn't that good, bro. People were spamming Pylus. Pylus's damage is not that high, right? Mm. People were yep. spamming that character every game. You have a character that can build like like. You know, realistically, with damage, maybe twenty eight thousand HP or something like that, and with, then with they're hitting damage, for a right? good amount. Like you could go put on a crit neck, yeah, and yeah, run yeah. Legitimate crit damage, like she can yeah, be twenty eight k. If you want to go full like Karina with her, I I think honestly the play with her might just be go like 32, 33 k HP. They have a full buff strip artifact. too into defense break that against any DPS in the game that's good. Like most DPS don't have Efras. So use that against, I don't know, like whatever DPS they have, Emil Bologna, Emil Yuffin, and like that's pretty solid. I, I think that she actually has some potential. I don't know if she's going to be good. I think her Bicorn S2 is like kind of stupid that it only strips one buff. <laughs> but like, you know, we, we've entered the age where an automatic S2 that happens and strips a buff off their team. I was like, wow, this is trash. And I was like, oh, I, I guess it doesn't automatically like strip all buffs and blind and silence. Yeah, or I was going to say at this dude, point. So like, I guess that's bad now. 
Dude, we have a horse, but it doesn't true damage pen and, like, eliminate 90% of your health or give you, like, blind silence and also, like, give ice cream buff to your whole team. Like, I can't believe, like, that's the state of, like, what the characters have to give because, I, I don't know, at least for me, it looks like Albedo's kit or it reminds me of, like, a hodgepodge between, like, you know, Abigail's strip S3 and, like, Carmen mid, and I wasn't really sure, like, where you we were going to put her, if she was supposed to be a DPS or if people are just going to give her Aureus, but I guess we're going to run her damage. Uh... Does she have what is her does her S1 give her a CR? It does, right? 20% at max. Yeah. 20 20%. Yeah. I mean oh, oh, wait, thank you for reminding me. We're real quick. But her S2 bicorn counts as a counterattack. So she can't counter oh, with S1 <laughs> and bicorn at the same time, which oh, is weird. God. Yeah. This this kind of brings me back like a long time ago, like we talked about a lot of these things. It's like Smilegate doesn't nerf. They never nerf things. Um, no, this it, is one of those in like things a balance that every time we had a meeting, we were like, please just nerf things. Yeah, eventually like, everything we'll keeps power creeping until a point where even if a character comes up with a what should have been a decent kit, it's like, well, they're not doing as much as some others. But yeah, Gabe, I don't know if you remember like much about Lua. Like you said, you like swapped for Lua, but you probably weren't playing much. But like that character yeah. literally was like the most banned character in RTA for two years. And Smallgate would put out the statistics every single season, and it would just say Lua's the like sixty percent something ban rate every season, and they didn't do anything about. It. They have all the data; they're literally posting yeah. the data, and they would do nothing about it. It's like, bro, this is an RGV five star. Nobody likes them. Literally, just nerf them. Like that. Yeah. That was literally what it was. It was just it, like, it, bro, nobody likes this character. <laughs> like straight up. It took up them nerf. releasing like six, like how. How many like Lua counters did they like attempt to release? I mean, like, only like and until we until we got to like Lia, there were none like that were. Well, Lia's like the nail in the coffin here, where it really counters her. But then you pick up Lia, they the most have OP no more use that hard counter her, and then you pick up Lia Lua or Lia Monk, and then suddenly you're riding the other guy. <laughs> like, yeah. The only thing that can beat an unbelievably broken character like that has to be an unbelievably broken character. It's just yeah, the only even way you can more do it. Ridiculous just, let's make a character <laughs> that's a team support tank DPS carry. Like, oh, great. So what you're telling me is just release uh, release the unnerfed version of Hua Young again. Well, people, well there were a lot now. of people that were honestly saying that kind of stuff. Yeah. There were a like, lot of people that were like, well, you should just release Hua Young. And it's like... You don't want that either. Dude, like, you weren't there, man. Like you, you didn't you didn't have to go through that. Like kicking anything in the game and it died? Like what? I guarantee not, one not everything, right? Like if you were a everything water except unit a Ravi. With the, if, you, <laughs> yeah, like, if you were an A Ravi on proof or if you were a water unit with the HP values between I think eleven K to like seventeen K and a half, you were fine. You you got to survive with a shred of HP left to your name, but anything well, else? Yeah. Well, nah. you see, it was a Schrodinger's Hua Young. Uh, <laughs> everyone will say that Hua Young was designed to kill Apocalypse Ravi, but the only unit they wouldn't kill was Apocalypse Ravi. But people would always say like, "Well, we need this unit to deal with a Ravi," but that was the only unit in the entire game that they just could never kill. Yep. Ah, oh, well, I guess um. Let's talk about the new characters, and then you guys can give your thoughts on what you think, if they'll affect the new meta. And then, uh, I guess we'll see how we, we think of them there. I mean, first one that's coming out, um, it's tonight. Well, after the patch night, it's going to be Emil Politis, right? Yeah. Yep, five or six hours. So Yeah, they're like, they're the new Emil Lilius, kind of. Yeah. It looks like... Uh... Dude, her stats are... She, she's down are like 400 deep. base HP, uh, one base speed, I think. And then if yeah, you look at the she's... stats they give... Wait, yeah, is Conqueror Lilius the 121 or is Lua the 121? Lua's 120, Conqueror Lilius 121. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. And base stats is Lua. Um, she's Conqueror Lilius, but with almost none of the counters that exist for MO Lilius. You can't Zeo them. You can't yep. uh, Summer Lulica them. You can't even Lionheart Sermia them. They're just... Uh, like they basically got rid of almost every single counter in the entire game to them but then and they gave her a stri i mean we're not we'll, we'll get to it but dude oh my god i i did not think that they could have made a more ridiculous s1 to like a character that's an opener but they really did give her a strip before hit plus highest attack target s1 not like random dual attack on that a ranger a... that already has guiding yes. light so you that can just run this or elysia candle 
Like excellent job, oh that my team. god. But yeah, Doesn't I mean, that mean it, she pairs really well with Janua. Then that just yes. came out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rage. Push yeah. everything back. Janua's running up the ladder with his rage buff, and then he's just gonna. Yeah, or like people haven't even gone to use her yet, but I think there's gonna be a lot of circumstances where you push back their team and slow them, and you just lap like really easily. Yeah, so she's yeah. gonna be doing a ton of damage as well because she always dual attacks with the highest attack. So she's gonna be pumping out a lot of damage before your opponent even gets one turn as well. Oh yeah, and uh, um, Teo or whatever his name is, the the fire unit that's that's a water unit. They're really trying to make him work. They're, they're <laughs> the really game exclusive, right? I heard God. with uh, yeah. that. That what that makes him uh have the rage or whatever yeah the thing is he might still suck like he might be good his ee seems promising but you gotta realize that he not only has the worst base stats in epic 7 but he's also gonna s3 and then three characters are gonna counter attack and kill your entire team exactly yeah so like i don't That's know so true also like, if you are play. you know if you're high on like ml politics and hey you this combo you also have to just be careful like what if they just ban ml politics like th there's probably gonna yeah, be a lot of people you. Like, then you have like this this random like oh, blue warrior on your team that can't like do any like real damage or be like a threat it's yeah. just like oh okay i guess but so there's I don't no know. other I, units that enable like the like a genua or like enrage units yet except for her right now right it's the first one that's released kind of thing no. Yeah, I, I mean, it's the same thing when, like, Conqueror Lilius came out, and you're like, well, there's no other units that enables ML Kawazu, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, wow, I have a default ML Kawazu enabler now. Oh, Makoko Baby, I'm getting so strong. Like, like yeah, Janu is strong, but it's just the fact that nothing counters her, right? She pushes everything back. She creates this space of, like, 20% CR where your team gets to play the game, and your opponent just gets to sit there and... And pray to Jesus Christ, their Elbrus works today. Like, what else? What else can they do? Okay. I'm not gonna lie. This feels like the definition of like an Elf Mage unit. Like, uh, if you are like racing 120 base speed units against like Rands and Paras, this is like the the perfect composition. Like, this is I don't know. I I know uh, you haven't kept up with much. Wait, were you here for when Jinte started dominating everything? Gabe, no. was that still around your time? Uh well it's he started then he was he played he started then but I don't think when I by the time I like stopped playing I don't think uh he was like dominating everything yet I don't think so if you're not familiar like Jinte is like one of like the bigger spenders for E7 and mm -hmm. his account is like it's just like not human anymore I, I, okay, like I and, know his account is fucking juiced though yeah yeah and what I was gonna say is that the way that this C Phantom Politis character looks like she's set up to be not like you know there's going to be people be people that play conquer lilius and play lua and stuff and it's going to be like your 290 300 speed average like maybe and like you know she'll be good but there are then these like asia whales or like these whale players that will make her like not even look human and that's like kind of the jinte account because like oh, last season or like, like a couple seasons ago like he will make someone like knockwall who's like main disadvantage is supposed to be like oh well if someone picks para or ran into knockwall you're kind of in trouble because you're gonna outspeed them mm -hmm. but like if you're just faster than everyone in the game like you know an asia whale like jinte or like i don't know a december uh phantom any of the e7 world championship contestants like this character is just not even gonna look real you know like they're gonna they're gonna pick this character and then they're gonna have like a 290 you know like genua or something and then your whole team's gone and like they'll play like very fast and they'll have different compositions or ways to make this character look unbalanced and i've been like going over and thinking about it like yeah if this if they just pull up with like a c phantom politist that's like 320 for instance right and then they pull up with like a lua that's also like 315 for instance and they start like doing these like speed contests against you like how do you even like what is the answer to this like if you don't cleave c phantom politics like i think you have to pre-banner like i have no idea how you would even like balance this character it's like uh, no counters like give rage can put herself in stealth you know because of her passive but also can you uh can use spatial temporal fan to hide another character or use flan's artifact for like free souls and like free combat readiness push like this is arguably, like, the most flexible opener that we've seen in, like, a year or two, which is it's kind of saying Lilius, a lot because right? we had but it. She's just yeah. meant to be the new Lilia. So I, I think this should, uh, you know, kind of awaken a lot of people to essentially, like, you know that one meme that, that people sometimes spam? There's a 7TV emo for it. I'm fam you can't fool me. I'm familiar with your game where it's, okay, 
So they get Conqueror Lilius, and then for, I don't know, for like a year and a half, they'll just make Conqueror Lilius uh, synergy and Conqueror Lilius counters, right? Mm -hmm. And then when all, all that's said and done, it's like, okay, let's drop Lua. And then it's Lua synergies and Lua counters. And then after that, it was Sea Phantom Politis, and then Sea Phantom Politis synergies and counters. And then, you know, I'm, I'm sure in three to six months' time, there is going to be a character that comes out for turn two players that's so strong. See, Phantom Politis is no longer like a default first pick every game character. Just like just like Conqueror Lilius was for like a hot few months. You can pick Conqueror Lilius first pick. She was like, you know, maybe you leave her for second rotation. Oh, maybe it's a Conqueror Lilius last. Y you know what I mean? It's like that period. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Laia was the, like, recent character for that, and then we just had a real slow meta, and, like, MLE Fane and all that, but now it's sped up again, and, yeah, it's, it's just always going to trade between the two, right? ML Politis is definitely a character that just rewards you so much for speed, though, because, like, there's no slow characters that really beat her. Mm -hmm. Like, she's the only character in the entire game that has a non-contact, full-strip, soul-burn, like, ignore Efrez into pushback. There's no character that has anything like this. And any character that does have non-contact um, pushbacks don't really have a strip. So like, yeah, um, this character is actually something we've never really seen before. And I think a lot of people, I mean, I, maybe we're overestimating, but like, I think a lot of people are underestimating like how crazy it is that there's not really anything you can pick in the entire game that beats them because they also have focus. So characters like Summer, Luka, like they don't, do anything they don't yeah. work that's true the fact yeah the, the kit is just overloaded in a sense of that case the kit's so simple too yeah like just it's so you read straightforward. It and it's so yeah. simple what she does but like so crazy mm -hmm. <clears throat> wait what am i seeing in the chat kind of who do you think was not good okay it's not okay all right i'm getting i'm getting clipped out of context what is i said I said that she was going to be, like, of course, like, if you're playing, like, aggro, if you're playing against, like, slower players, this character's not balanced. Like Jenna said, right? There's no oh. answer to this. But, like, I had, like, people asking me, like, oh, dude, Sea Phantom's gonna ruin Ranzio. And I'm yeah. like, no, it, like, Ranzio does not get affected by Sea Phantom Politis, like, at all. Like, if you play Commander Pavel, like, maybe, maybe, mm. right? But, like, you know... She's not stopping you, she, you know, despite being a politist, she's not the politist that stops you from getting combat readiness. So then, like, if you're playing, like, again, faster cleave against her, I'm sure it'll, like, it's a whale, like, it's whale versus whale, which is why the conversation doesn't matter. And I yeah. do think that, of course, she's strong. But, like, yes, okay, you know, like, if you can outspeed the 120 base speed unit, then you win. But, like, you know, see, Phantom Politis has so much, I think, in her kit, uh, to kind of back you up even if you get outsped mm -hmm. kind of similar to conquer lilius but it's even better because like let's say you get outsped like by like an assassin sid you're not hitting her yeah. so like who cares right and oh, that's true. you know if you know if she has like a still really impactful s1 or if she has like a soul burn and she can survive like i don't know what you guys are theory crafting by the way in terms of build but like you know even if you yeah. run her well, I mean, like, what if you want, like, an ER or, like, an F main ring, whatever. Like, I saw a few people saying, like, well, if she's going to soul burn every turn and, like, you know, the only thing that's stopping her from dying is whether she's unbuffable, then she's, an, like, a dual attacking monster that stays in stealth. And, like, if you keep your stealth every turn, then, like, how are they going to, you know what I mean? Like, you're just not going to die unless if you fight against uh, AoEs, but... That's I'm just getting clipped out of context. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I, I think sense, she's obviously good. I think okay. she's obviously good. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. That's fair. Okay, I guess yeah. She's like one of those units where like she has a lower base speed compared to all the other openers. So unless you're actually going against someone who has insane speed gear, most of the time if you pick a faster opener, you're probably gonna outspeed her. Versus... Yeah, not not to like harp on the topic of speed too much either. Yeah. But like, although a lot of people will say that like one twenty, like one twenty is fast. Like let's let's like let's be real here. It is very yeah, fast. It, she's she's faster actually than most openers, especially from 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 back then, right, Gabe? It, it's mm. just more so that in in recent years, um, the the, the really premier openers like Ram Para, those are one twenty and one twenty nine. Yeah. Zio gets twenty percent CR. Um, but if you think about like the classic openers, like your flan, that's what 114 or 116? 
Um, Something same, like that. Same with Flid, right? Yeah. Those are 115, 116. I think Monk's the same range. And she's she beats all of those. Mm-hmm. So yeah. so you don't you ain't got to worry about that, right? Like th- those are those are solid solutions. Yeah. And even for the characters that are faster than her, like people say, like, oh well, what about the characters in like the one twenty one to one twenty eight, one twenty nine range? The only two characters that are actually built for like competing speed that are above one twenty are like Ran and Para. Like no one outside of like some real freak players are you know building like Celeste or you know like building you know some. I don't even know who's up there, like Assassin Sid, Coley, I think, are like 124, yeah. 126. So, like, it doesn't matter, right? Like, no one's going to do that. And even if you do, the only character that maybe kind of competes with C Phantom Politis is Pavel, because he can knock her out of stealth. But, like, come on. You know what I mean? It's Pavel. <laughs> like, like, that's, you're, that's you're, the yeah, only I mean, other thing. How much is he going to do? What, what's his uh, name? It's 124, right? I think he's 124 or 126. I don't, I can't remember if Sid is 126 or if. Pavel's 124. One of them is 124. One, the other is 126. Mm-hmm. It's it's. Uh, I hate how many speed calculations. Well, then you pick Moon Bunny. T- yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Silver yeah, one like, is honestly the best way to deal with them. Wait, would Moon Bunny counter her? No, oh, no, not um, not see fandom Pavel. 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 The Moon Bunny counters a bunch of the other ones, right? Because for like a good two years, all the really OP openers is extra turn, and you front load all of your value, which Moon Bunny either like either blocks out or she reverses, right? Mm-hmm. But um, so see, see, fandom politics comes, you know, no extra turn, so you can't pick Moon Bunny. Yeah. Uh, well, what about Green Luluka, right? Well, she has focus, so enjoy two point five focus. Okay, well, what about Zeo? You can't outspeed Zeo, right? Well, she's stealth; she gets guiding life for free. Okay, so you can't pick that. Like, wh- what do you got? <laughs> you would have to have an honest race. Like, okay, your C Phantom Politis got outsped and S three by Conquer Lilius, and like. There you go. <laughs> like, that's it. So, like, and no one wants to play speed like that, right? I'm sure no one is, like, always banking Well, you can't on... even do that, right? Because if you're playing, like, let's say I don't have a set team composition with Cleave, right? I, mm-hmm. You pick Bunny, or you pick Politus. I pick L- Lilius, right? I'm, I'm one speed faster. And let's assume we have the same gear. You have access to Zeo. I don't have access to Zeo. You pick up your mm-hmm. Zeo. I can't even ran you anymore because I'd be picking ran into a Zeo. Then you slam imprints and I lose, right? Yeah, and so, so she's honestly, used to draft in a way where if you put your fastest gear on her and you pick her first, you're just way more likely to win. Yeah, this like is... ML Lilius back in the day. Exactly yeah. right, because yeah. ML Lilius, if you put your fastest gear on her versus slow players, you just you just race their acid, right? That's, that's kind of why they put out Zeo for a long time. Like slower players, just like I'll just drop a Z on the Lilius, right? And for that whole season. Um, some players started putting Lilius on an ER build so they can play into Zeo. Oh my god, Bastion. You guys remember that, right? That's also like, yeah, what a time. Yeah. You know, what's really sad is that, um, I mean, maybe Gabe will be a little more used to this, but uh, you know how everyone used to kind of have their own play style, Gabe? Yeah, yeah. Like, everyone would be like, oh, and- like, you would play against a guy and be like, oh, this is the, that guy, you know, like, this is the yeah. guy that always likes to play like that, or th- this you guy's know, like, the cleaver or whatever. Now everyone just plays everything. Thing, and it's just the same teams and units every time. Yep. But play styles are a lot That's more the homogenized. Thing. The OP, the more OP units are anymore. a lot more dominant when it comes to the game, right? Yeah. Wind it well, back two and just a half a years ago. Now, like, you have to Gabe, Gabe was the yeah. Flood Cleaver. Kana was the C- Cerise Cleaver. Genizad was the Una player. I, I was like... <laughs> Unizad, dude. I was brain oh, dead Landy it. spammer, right? Like, we, we all had, like, actually varying identities to what we did, and then uh, things that pulled people to our streams right now it's just like have you have you seen a light stream gabe no i, I haven't watched dude I, I don't think i've watched an epic seven <laughs> do you think light even cleaves anymore wait do, do you think light even cleaves you, anymore you, 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 you should me light is not played. a cleaver if he you could, me oh, light hasn't cleaved in like a year dude i can't believe uh, that is like maybe the biggest plot twist ever okay. too well, in okay, a maybe shocking... not a year but okay let me tell you. i will never forget the season two when i went went for my legend frame Right in RTA, I fought against Light I think two or three times, and it was just me and him Flitica cleaving each other back and forth. Essentially, like I'd win one, he'd win one, and then that kind of thing. And like I'll never, I was like, oh damn, dude, this Light guy's fast as fuck. And dude, then you're telling me he's in, not you know, a cleaver anymore when I know him only what as if, a What if I cleaver? tell you um, the play style he plays now most closely resembles like what those A Ravi or Fire Ravi like players code. did back in the day. <laughs> Yeah, Light, he's light E seven yeah, to code no, E seven. No, what if I tell you Jenna also plays like that, and I also play like that? So oh no, I actually only cleave. 
Oh, Wait, God, let's go, soul, baby. No, I, I don't like, have Ludwig, so I can't I, even I, cleave. I had a decision to make. I either play cleave or I uninstall the game because playing standard makes me want to kill myself. So <laughs> it, I was like, well, so I think I'm going to play cleave. Like, And you know what? You you know what I learned about cleave for like before it even just became like meta just now? You don't have to adapt to the meta. Just don't get yep. counterattacked constantly, and you can win. Like I'm, I'm yep. like pretty easy top two hundred. Just really casually, just like spamming teams without ignoring my opponent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just, you just send it right. You either go fast, you win fast, or you lose fast. Either exactly. It's like I don't have yep. to sit there for twenty minutes waiting for Laya to hit me with a bass guitar four times. Like I just, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I don't have to wait for this bullshit. Like I either win or lose like so fast. It's oh, like it's just better. Okay. Yeah, th this is probably the toughest season that I played. And normally, I, I can also it's do the same thing. Right? Sit at rank 200, like, not try. This season, like, I, I can't cleave, or I don't have a structure where I can cleave because I'm missing one key unit. So I'm just watching my unit not Elbrus every turn, and it's it's frying my brain cells. Wait, are you missing and Ludwig? I, I don't have Ludwig, yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Does, that's that, does that mean I can't cleave either, character. then? Oh, uh, good luck, buddy. It's harder. It's going to be really hard. Well, if you're trying to cleave up to Emperor, like, yeah, you, you could do probably it. do up it, it, right? Yeah. But... He's like the best cleave DPS of all time. Putting really? It's crazy. Oh. His damage Wait, is unreal. Do you know what he does, Gabe? No, I saw a video of his animations, and that's pretty much it. So I don't he is literally over. just a single unit He's... cleave. Like, you kill a whole yeah. team with just him. Like, like I actually <laughs> I played a match against a guy recently. The guy picked like one speed unit and he didn't pick mitigation right but he picked four bulky units yeah so i just banned his speed unit and ludwig was still up so i outsped him because my ludwig is like 240 something or whatever right and then i just killed his whole team with just ludwig like not a single one of my like other in one did a shot single thing. or like just one by one like how is this no well basically he he spams soul burn so you just get a bunch of souls and yeah. then his s3 does more damage if you've done at least two soul burns um it penetrates like 60 percent of their defense or whatever and it's AoE. So, like, yeah. you basically just soften up two characters with the Soul Burn, like, S1, S2. And then you just S3 and their whole team instantly dies with foiled. Yeah. His S1 is, is also an attack buff. Like, it gives you attack buff after you've casted it. And then his skill 2 gives him a hit chance buff and a skill nullifier. And then his skill 3 gives up to 60% pen if you've... Oh, yeah, okay. again, if you, let, you've let me put it twice, really simply. So. You know how CDOM used to work, right, Gabe? Yeah. So oh, imagine if Seedom Soul Burn instead of like the extra damage, right? She gives herself attack buff. Yeah. Right? Well, it's also she like gives a herself attack buff. Well. And then she has a second soul burn on her S2 that gives her hit chance up. So you're not dying to evasion units, right? Nobody's catching you with an Aiden or a Green Violet, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have an AoE nuke S3 that for every time you soul burn, you get 20% more defense pen up to 60. And he starts with 20. I so you soul burn him, him once. Soul burn him twice into the enemy's like evasion oh. anchor, and then you just drop the S3 and you win the game. Just buy some packs, you'll get them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah let, me, let me just whip out, whip out the by the what's that called? The I saw seasonal battle. It's like a what four to five star, like the ML summon now oh, or something. Oh god, yeah, the, dude, that the, wasn't even a thing. Yeah. I was like, what is this? this is like, uh, yeah, they Gabe they added, four to five star. They finally added that. Wow. Dude, they know how to milk us, bro. Oh my god. Jesus. They've been Stupid releasing things, more packs every single patch. Oh, like it's god. unreal how many packs have been coming out. Yeah, don't <laughs> don't count on good content, but there definitely will be a new pack or a readjustment to an old pack or a re-release or an adjustment to one of the old. Pa every single patch, every Tuesday night, without fail. Like it'll be. Something like random, like guys, we reintroduced the leaf pack, but this time you get like a couple more leaves. Like, let's go, same price. There's... But we're also gonna refresh it. Like, it's uh, it's crazy. This is gonna be off topic, but I saw the pack thing. Like, what? They're giving level seventy gear in a pack or something? Yeah, there's like oh a be hunt God. beginners pack that's like a full set of rage gear at level seventy. Don't yeah, don't buy that. But why is that? Why is that? Isn't that like, dude? Level seventy gear is like trash, isn't it? Yeah, it's like you can get better scary. gear. Just that like is such a slap in the face, the... man. I was like, like, dude, you can hit Wyvern 13 so easily and just go just go for Wyvern 13. You'll probably get better gear to, like, farm hunts yourself there. I was just like, what? Okay. Yeah, like, they're just trying to make a quick buck off of, like, new players and, like, the, the disparity of knowledge. What can you do? Oh. Like, the worst thing about this is that, like, okay, so the pack, it's... I don't even know how much the pack... Did they say what the price is? I don't no. know if they... Do, do, do we it. care what the price is? Yeah, if it's well, dollar, regardless of what it like, is. like, it's overcharging. <laughs> okay, well, whatever, whatever the case. Like, I, I feel like... 
they were doing pretty well, honestly, in terms of like the new player, like giving out free gear experience. Like they used to give out, like, I'm not sure if you like received it yourself, Gabe. Oh, yeah, like, you, like they gave a lot, like the 85 sets and stuff. Yeah, like, you know, they give out like the 88s or whatever. And we're not even talking about like bad old school, like Twitch drop, like gear. Oh my yeah. God, if you guys even remember that, like that, <laughs> at, that, that, that shit was crazy. Like that was so new. They gave out like 88, like maybe some of the subs are bad or all roll into, roll into F or whatever, but it's usable if you're a new player. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, you know, with each passing season, with each passing, you know, like patch, they would eventually get to the point where, oh, hey man, like the only thing we haven't given yet is like a usable rage set of gear like maybe we'll just give it and and then they like sell it as a pack like it and it's 70 it's not even 80 it's not even 90 or 85 you it know to like 90 gear like it, i think because like 85 uh, since you can reforge it it makes the 70 even worse but if it's 88 you can't reforge it but the stats right it's like it's still pretty good yeah it's, yeah i think like, i think I, an 88 set would have been reasonable yeah oh god it just looks so it looks so terrible i can't believe i i'm genuinely like baffled that they like said to themselves like this is the pack that we want to release because the like if you're trying to introduce pl like new players into the ecosystem of being able to farm like harder hunts more consistently and get them like pilled into like you know you know, spending all their money on leaves and stuff like, pilled. yeah, like you, you can't do it like with this, right? Yeah. You know, the packs where you get the, the quick, even the quick battle edition that they added to the monthly pack. I understand what they're going. Like, I understand what they're doing. Okay. I'm sure yeah. all of us can understand, but, but is this because they're trying to take advantage of new players to come for overlord. That's the yeah. what it is. Yeah, like, much. Oh my God. I gotta understand yeah. that. All right. Well, Jenna said, and, uh, well, Jez, you, some of you guys said, that Albedo might be better than you think, so maybe, um, maybe she'll be well, asked. It's really but... number dependent, but I think she's underrated right now. Like the overall sentiment is like, you know, she she oh her damage isn't good, bro. Mm -hmm. Look at Hua Young's release trailer; her damage didn't look fucking good, bro. Well, the um, problem is she's boring. She's just yeah. a really boring character. You know why? You want to know the sad truth? Because slow players are boring people, so they eat it up. All right. <laughs> Eat your hearts out. This is what you deserve. Boring character. <laughs> I mean, I think it's more no, but... so the fact that, like, okay, they made Shout here pretty lore accurate, but, like, Albedo, lore accurate Albedo she is doesn't just Carmen on crack. Well, like, she's we not really, not like, a We do not want lore accurate Albedo, right? Um, She's bashing. Yeah, I mean, like, she's supposed to be one of the tankiest people, like, in the series. Like, that's kind of her whole thing, but she's not a fighter. In fact, like, she doesn't really have an actual fight you the entire series about? ever. Yeah. In the anime, they she fight. There's this one time where she fights with like she has her like what the full fucking the suit mech on. guy, right? Yeah, yeah. She has like her full armor on, right? I'm when I was watching the trailer for, I'm surprised they didn't give her anything like for that for SU. Yeah, like, Shaltir gets her armor. Her yeah, Shaltir gets it, but yeah. why does Alberto not transform in her S3? It doesn't really. I don't know. Yeah, so I was just like, oh okay. I guess they don't know why. To keep the they, booba. They knew. It. They knew everybody's gonna pull for Albedo either yes, way. No so they're like, let's just like nobody cares. Like like who cares? That's so we'll cute. just give the extra stuff to Shaltier. By the way, Shaltier S3, one of the best animations in the whole game. Dude, it's yep. fucking sick. I love it. It's so good. Dude, they even had their insurance policy with Albedo. They made HP drink. Like HP extra damage. Like they knew like Albedo yeah, literally could like Albedo literally could have been like a, a character with zero skills. Like she mm -hmm. just sits there and like is just a waifu on your screen. Well, and she people is, would actually. still pull for her. Well, yeah, the design <laughs> yeah, team was but... like, we just have to sell this character with big tits, time to like not go to work and just phone it in. And like let's be clear, the the animations and the models and all that, hey, they look good. They That's like and true. you know what? I'm pulling for Albedo no matter what, even though I don't know how much I'm gonna I be. I think able I'm to gonna triple us everybody. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Overlord, so they finally gave a collab that wasn't dog shit. shit. So I'm, like, Holy I'm, I'm down to triple S everybody. Why not? Damn, Holy okay. fuck, that's crazy. I have like 14 slates, like, and I've got like, I don't know, like five pities or something. I'm going to throw everything in. The, the thing that I will say, though, it's kind of a shame about this Albedo character is that I don't, I don't know if you guys have felt the same way, but it feels like the only way that you can really get excited about a knight, unfortunately, because of how like the counter? distorted... Yeah, it's literally they have to be like an Elbrus counterer with yeah, like how, some. How good are they some... with Elbrus, or how like how much it makes your opponent wants to commit Sudoku if you put them on Holy Sack? Yeah, like do do they go like psycho? Like do they go sicko mode after you know like five hits or something? Do they and like it, it kind of just sucks because I think that's knights in general. Like we haven't had like a true true knight release uh, in terms of mitigation. I think since like. 
dude, I don't even know, like LR, LRK or something. Yeah, like like um, so like just like a knight, you know, that gives like Aureus or something. Like a Aureus holder, you know. Yeah, we haven't had that in a long time, That's and I think true. it's because they're not like very interesting. But, but like yeah. the you last few we them, got right? was Last Rider Crow getting buffed, and he kind of became i remember back then you know you put your symbol of unity on him but now he you put aureus on him right mm -hmm. yeah because uh, yeah. he just saves you a team slot he's a damage dealer with an aureus holder in one and then um before that was arrowell uh getting the special ah, yeah, change yeah, yeah, yeah. and becoming oh, yeah. an mm -hmm. absolute I mean, arrow is like a meta unit right from yc every fucking guild war defense has one also yep Yes, yes. Er Errol, ever since she got the specialty change, was like a mainstay for anybody who didn't have speed. And now it's Crimson Armin again. We we've like looped back. We always loop back to Crimson Armin at back. some point. Dude, Crimson Armin is the fucking. She's too reliable mitigation. Seven. Jesus, yeah. man. And hey, Albedo has the built in 20% reduction. She's kind of a Crimson Armin type character. That's a big deal. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Can't underrate that. Wait. Someone... Albedo has, I think, the almost the exact like old Crimson Armin passive. It reduces yeah, it's crit. damage. Yeah. And then up to 20%. Yeah, yeah I think that, Crimson Armin yeah. was only crit before, yeah. Before they're like, let's make it all damage. Yeah. Yeah. Listen... I, I actually yeah, so part of the reason why I, I'm kind of like holding out for Al Al Albedo, even though people are like, no, she doesn't do much like she first of all she increases speed she gets her own cr and then like this thing i feel like goes kind of underrated the numbers didn't look too good on the preview but you know i'll, I'll believe it when i see it that the numbers are bad you know what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's fair all good and if it hey look if it doesn't look good don't worry guys next week we're getting a patch that says uh let's go bacorn will now apply you know stigma it'll blind you it'll silence you it'll reset you and then like, easy peasy. Like, wrap it up, boys. We've got it fixed. Like, that okay. simple, simple solution. Please change Ainz. The, please. <laughs> so, okay, like, he's almost a real character and not just kind of gimmicky. He's, he, like, he I, needs that passive where it's like he just takes extra light damage removed, and I think he's actually playable. I, I don't even think it's just the light damage. It's like, okay, his S3, I'm pretty sure you can just 15% it, which is idiotic. Yeah. His S3 looks like, kind of meme to me. It, it needs to it. be like a status, like Omen. That's what I thought it yes. was. And then yes, people on YouTube comment be. kept telling me I was wrong. I was like, oh shit. I, or I, I, they should just straight up put into a skill set that like it ignores Ephra's so that you don't even need to build effectiveness on him or something like that. Um, he also has the worst base stats fucking ever. He has yep, yep. attack for no reason. He has Ephra's. Like, look, you can't build him speed tank efres effectiveness like no like you can't do that you're wasting stats right and 100 efres is what against like almost nothing in the game so it doesn't even matter mm -hmm. so like he's his stats are just so trash this is like teyu level stats the taurus mage is just the worst stats yeah. you could possibly have sage all um like, yeah it's on the same level them. like yeah. dj basar it's just like terrible right um so, and then he takes 30 percent more damage from light units which that means aiden just will always one shot him, him basically no matter what true um i mean lqc let's be honest it would probably one shot him like him. either way like it just doesn't really matter but like last rider crow he's not good versus last rider crow either because uh he's s1 spamming aoe right so then mm -hmm. last rider crow's s3 is hitting him for like ten thousand damn true damage and he's a mage so like he has high defense and low base health so like you know like they, they should have given him something else i think that the whole fact that he gets counter as well is like weird like it's cool but look if they want to go with the lore stuff how about they just have it so he gives himself four random buffs that should be his s2 just four completely random buffs could be anything yeah well, the, yeah like, the other thing that. that i think is crazy dude can you believe that his s3 counts as a constant debuff for dilibit that is the stupidest yeah, thing I've ever stuff heard. Stuff like that, it just doesn't really yeah. make much sense. Like, like that's why you should be like, "Oh, real, dude, wait, so yeah, they just keep they talking to make it a then, right? Yeah, every turn. Oh, it's 10, only one. 10 for free. Oh. But yeah, but yeah, like yeah. yeah. But like, it's just there for twelve turns until like someone explodes, which I just thought was crazy because like, like, like they've said, right? This was supposed to be an omen debuff. This was supposed to be lethe. This was supposed to be like not a detriment to you. And uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm tinfoil hatting a little bit, guys. Just just put your hats on with me, dude. The S two was supposed to mean that he does more damage to light characters. There's no, no way, dude. There's no way they said to themselves, bro. Like, 
yes, you can die to Navy Captain Landy, Last Rider Crow, any character that's light and has damage, and then also made it because. So, it no, they wanted like him you, to take more damage. It's no, literally just yeah, more reason. Yeah, they're trying to make him like 100%. a lore accurate character, right? Like, I, if they really uh, wanted like, to make him truly faithful lore accurate, bro, that ultimate would have, would hit literally everything on the uh, in the entire game, right? Like Overlord everything is, that could breathe. Yeah. Full buff strip gets the omen on. Like goodbye. Yeah, o yeah. Overlord's super based on like D and D and stuff, and he's like a lich. And liches mm. take more damage from light. And it, even in the show, like, you see, like, he takes more damage from light. Like, that's literally, like, supposed to be his weakness. Mm -hmm. So. Is there anything in the show that, like, lets him, I don't know, revive or something? Like, surely, no, surely he, they're going to. No, necromancer that he's like, I'm not about that. Well, like, he has, like, like, minions and whatever. But he's really about, like, buffs and debuffs. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure he. Honestly, if your main character. Well, actually, I don't know. Have they ever. Uh have they ever oh. buffed a free collab character before? Like week one? Uh, who's that fire girl from? Oh, no, not week one. Sh Shuna was like, was like, yeah, Shuna was I think a full year later. or something yeah, after, yeah, yeah. right? But I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure if they, it's, a, it's such a dilemma because they've never done this before. They've never made like the main first character or like the main character of a show be free and also an ML, but like the main character is not like, you know, some NPC. Like Ainz is, you know, a lot of people watch Overlord for Ainz, right? Cause yeah. he's such like, you know, he's such a cool villain or villain hero, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I don't know if they would be interested in buffing a free character if he ends up being, you know, kind of not as good as someone like Shaltir or Albedo. Shuna, so I don't see why not. Yeah, but that took like, you know what I mean? That was like a, hey guys, like get excited. Next time that we rerun Slime or, you know, like we'll have a Shuna buff, which is like, okay. That's like something additional to get, to get excited for. But I don't I don't know if that's like enough for me. Like, I don't know if that's enough for them to justify. I, I don't know. I hope that he gets buffed too, because I already see a lot of potential in him. I'm just going to run a bunch of characters that are like fast and then just pop like the debuff fast. And that's going to be... That's gonna be like premium. That's gonna be premium YouTube content. That's all I know. Like it's just gonna be fifty thousand, fifty thousand, fifty thousand, and the game is either me dying in two turns because I didn't get to proc because I missed it, or it's gonna blow up and then you know the enemy opponent is pr uh, is pretty pissed off. But I don't know. I also like I I think that they since they've already done a lot of adjustments to constellations with the mages, I'm really surprised that they didn't announce like Taurus Mage like adjustments with him coming out. Like if they knew that he was coming out, I'm really surprised that they didn't like try to make them a little bit tankier or like well, change because they things. almost never change constellations. They're not really going to do it just yeah. for Eins, I don't think. They should have just given him a different star sign. I don't know. Yeah, that's that just seems they could have done that for sure. I don't know. I ho I'm going to be using Eins. I hope that mm -hmm. he's like all right. I'm going to be pre-banning eight in every single game. I think when Shaltir comes out, it might be easier to not even pre-ban yeah. Aiden because it might just be like picking Aiden's actually a trap because she has like enough counters now to be able to deal with her. Yeah. And maybe she won't be much of a problem. The issue is though that the meta is kind of fast right now and he probably sucks in a fast meta. Unless you want to do some like, I was thinking some real goofy ass shit. Like you pick three RNL thieves and then you pick Ainz and you just take so many turns you insta-give somebody like before the opponent even gets one turn. You pick like... Crescent Moon, Rin, Ran, and like Peyra. You just take so many turns. <laughs> they literally can't like uh, even get a single turn before he does 50k. I'm sure that actually, if you just pair her with like, again, or if you just pair him rather with all the openers, like, you know, Knockwall, Lua, you're probably going to have a number of games, especially early on in the week, where you're just going to proc it. And no one's going to like think about it, about the fact that you've proc 12 turns. But 12 turns. If you have speed buff and you, if you have extra turns, is actually not as hard to pop. Originally, when I first read him, I thought it literally meant he, like the person that you seal, has to take twelve whole fucking turns. Yeah, I was, I was like, like this is trash. Holy <laughs> shit! That must have been like the worst design kit ever. But twelve, I don't know. I I think we'll have to see a little bit more to like see if it's good or bad. But a lot of people said that like Famir's whole, you know, getting her uh, her element. You know, her three element thing was super, super impossible. But then, like, you know, people developed a tech to try and get it off faster. You know, maybe, maybe Ein's players will find a way to do that too. I know yeah, there's the a lot is, of people that like the it. tech is spend a shitload of money. That's that's <laughs> really cool tech. Yeah, that's get hey, fast. You know what? It what works works. You know, like 
But yeah, I don't know. Like, hopefully, hopefully someone will develop like a draft for him because he looks cool, mm -hmm. right? Like, I think his animation, like the idea yeah, behind you know a full, you know, like sounds cool enough to me. Yeah, it's, I, it's I, thematically I, very cool. I, I definitely enjoy how they try to make things at least lore accurate. Like Roy. It pulls in more like actually just Overlord enjoyers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Roy's really cool too, how he works. Like they really went with the lore stuff for that. Oh, hell yeah. Hmm. Losing, losing like any semblance the second he gets wet. Like, uh oh. Okay, well, Shaltir. You guys said... Well, I guess we know for a fact that it counters Aiden. Yeah. And yeah. aside from that, I think I, from what I heard most, Shaltir seems like the one that people think is like the most OP so far. Yeah, we need to see her numbers though. Like I'm, like I'm wondering. Like, I hope Smallgate didn't have the most insane numbers there because, let's be real, how the game works right now, uh, if you're not basically one shotting a bruiser tank then you're not doing enough, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, her passive is insane. Like, look at that ability. Like, says uh, weeps at the fact that this ability exists. Like, this is yeah. insane how good this is. Like, crazy passive. Um, and her S1 is also insane. Like, she's a character that has crazy survivability, doesn't need attack buff, uh, with her artifact basically has built-in lifesteal. She has injury, which is insane, versus Laia, and she has anti-evasion. So, like, she's kind of just good against a lot of things. Like, kind of a jack-of-all-trades sort of DPS. That's mm -hmm. just, And she's invisible all the time, so they have to AoE. So she's good against a lot. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I don't think there's even, like, uh, you know, I was kind of theorycrafting, like, what artifact you would use on her. Like, even if you don't run her on Lifesteal, like, what is she even missing? Like, you don't need Benny Morrow's Tachi for the attack. One buff. shot. A defense yeah, break like, before yeah, her S3. Defense break or like, defense pen against, like, Yuffine. Maybe a guaranteed yeah. break versus Landy. Ignore that, damage sharing. That's what it comes down to, right? Her matchup into Landy, Yuffine's not spectacular. Her S1 helps her check Leia. So she kind of has a spot in the meta, but I I, I, don't, I don't see her being, like, Genua, you know? Like, you play her and play them every game, and it's just go crazy. Again, the, the other thing is that I think... Like, when I saw this character, like, she was obviously designed to kill Aiden, right? And that's, like, how they showed her in the showcase. But I think it's absolutely bonkers. I mean, eventually people had to, you know, push the limits of the character. But while I had originally said that, and I think, like, Jenna mentioned it too, like, she's going to, like, push Aiden out a little bit more, I think, than she, you know, Aiden is, like, a pest. Like, honestly, I hate that character so much. But with this and, like, you know, Debt Dealer Ray and all the different, like, Laia, whatever character you want to try and deal with Aiden nowadays, I feel like she was going to be, or, like, Shaltier was designed to kill Aiden, but then it was so crazy because then I started hearing people talk about, like, hey, can Shaltier one-shot Karina? And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, that's that's not that's not what they intended this it's character to be. nobody likes like, Karina, dude. Dude, like, that's not, crazy. Uh, like, let's be real. Know. Not even her fans like her anymore because she got a boyfriend. Like, it's over. Like, nobody <laughs> likes that character. All right? Like, oh, literally, like... God. Look, I think they, it's also, like, kind of an important point, right? Like, is, is Aiden really a problem anymore? Like, you're a cleaver con artist, so you probably play against her, like, more than most people. Like, you just Ludwig Briar her, suddenly Aiden's pinched. Like, I don't even yeah, think yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, problem yeah. for most people anymore. Aiden's really only a problem if you're a big Yuffing player and... and, and, and you somehow do not build enough bulk, which I don't mm -hmm. really think exists anymore, right? I was it's just thinking that, you know, like, that's, like, I don't know if you guys, like, felt that was the way that they advertised her, but, like, that's what I thought Shaltir was supposed to be designed for. No, this is lore and... accurate. Her, like, ultimate move in the story is, like, she has, like, she spears somebody, you can't dodge it, you can't oh, block oh, it, oh. you can't protect yourself with any type of magic. It's, like, it penetrates through all protective barriers and shit, and it just hits you one time really hard. Hmm. It's like not even her ultimate move, though. Like, I guess they couldn't really have given her anything else, though. I, I mean, out of the story we got, that's like the closest thing to like you could assign to an ultimate, right? Yeah. I do think it is absolutely hilarious that they didn't even make it like 70 or something. They said 100. So that's even if it's 100%. like an Aiden, yeah, like even if they gave like even they if Aiden finally has did that, cat, you're yeah. like, dude, just stop. It's because they don't like, to... dude. Nobody likes to shit like Briseria's S two or or and yeah, Zahawk's yeah. like thing. It's like, why is it fifty percent extra? Like, just make it hundred percent. Like, why yeah. are you doing this bullshit where like sometimes I can miss? Like, 
Who even mm -hmm. thought of that? So they're just like, screw it. Even if you miss debuff, you can hit characters. Like, it yeah. just doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is great. Dude, a character that I think... I don't think you're... Uh, you're definitely not here for it, Gabe. But that was, like, super giga memed on, like, a long time ago. But now is like, just so good because of, like, the things that we've been complaining about. Or, like, you know, Aiden in general. Dude, Death Dealer Ray and him putting... Like, the sleep change in general, honestly. The fact that you can guaranteed hit a, a stealth or evasion... Or, sorry, an evasion character if they're asleep is so nice like i don't really like playing against ddr to be clear is he good but i now? did play a little bit because he he's, yeah. he's, he's he's as close yeah, he to yeah. one of the best units in the game like he's he's guaranteed us tier. really yeah he's insane oh he's a kinda... single-handed control unit like he just yeah and, and you, partial you with carry angel of light time. right game no I, I, well i no I didn't. like you you were there when she came out she yeah, was yeah, giga busted yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah. Death Dealer Ray is Angel of Light if he turned if he was a DPS unit and he turned if Angel of Light also turned all your other characters into DPS units. <laughs> that that's a really good way of putting <laughs> that, it. That's what a good comparison, fuck? right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's crazy too, because he himself is also like kind of a damage machine if you're not careful. Like oh. uh he like you know, he gives the uh well he basically gives a debuff game that allows you to injure targets and also pop and deal additional so it's like injury right yeah. so eventually they have to die like with yeah, enough yeah. time and again now his like skill three doesn't require like the whole focus setup or whatever he's just now a like a full sleep character uh he puts everyone to sleep and then um you know you could he has cr push on his skill two mm. that also then gives like this plague venom buff Right, so not only do you have flexibility and being able to like hit any target in the game because they're asleep, right? That's how sleep works. Yeah. They also get like they lose like thirty percent of their health like as soon as they get hit, or like assuming and and oh. the injury or sorry the the venom buff or the venom debuff it stacks like individually. So like if you wanna if you have like seven venom stacks on someone, you can do that damage. And same thing with injury uh, or if you have his his S one, you deal damage based on how injured the characters are. So it's like he's a DPS, but also like the best control character in the game. Wait, it's, when it's did they so, buff him so hard? Uh, like maybe what is Half it now? Valk? Now? Like yeah. Oh, it's been a while. Then. Six, like like, like yeah. probably right after E seven WC, if I remember correctly. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Something he like he was that. so there, good. There was a there was a huge push to essentially to make injury a thing, right? So the the reason why Ray is huge is because, um, he he puts down Venom, right, and then Venom detonates he detonates his own venom and then now the buff so whoever has the buff also applies a venom and then it immediately detonates and if you're ray himself he does fixed or additional damage that is scaling to that injury like kano saying so he, he's wow. a he's a dps unit he turns all your other characters into dps units it's um yeah. it, it's it's I That's haven't had to deal with him for a, for for a minute now. I've been banning him this season, so I'm um, excited to let him back out the cage uh, for end of season. It's gonna be fun. He is he is crazy. He like again though. To be fair, like he isn't a character that has you know ignore ER or something. Like yeah. his soul burn is like a is a hundred percent or increased chance on his S one to sleep. But he, uh, ignore ER. You build two hundred F on him. He gets effectiveness yeah. buff, bro. He just starts ripping into people's like main ER cleansers. Okay, I will say, I will say, as like as like the DDR spammer, it <laughs> DDR like spammer. okay, it was a luxury to play him like at that rate where like you know you're trying to sleep. If you're trying to sleep Destina with Death Dealer Ray, like you have you, there's a cone of shame on your head, okay? Because that that is a crazy that is a crazy win con. But a lot of people, including myself, did that. But if you miss, like a lot of times, like with the way that you play someone like Death Dealer Ray, if you miss or like it doesn't, you get fifteen percent. And that is the worst feeling ever, and you actually feel like you got scammed by picking him because mm. it's like oh, everyone's oh. The Spectre Tenebri is a lot. Like, you know, the Spectre Tenebri can S3 me. And it's like, uh, I'm dead. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, it feels kind of feels kind of bad. But, I mean, I don't know. It, it feels kind of good uh, to play him in in a, in a an otherwise, like, con controlless E7 meta. Yeah. Like, the only control that E7 had back in the day was, again, you know, like, openers. Yeah. And if you did more than that, like, if you, like, up until they introduced, like, you know, the summertime, like, summertime Iceria meta... Like, you picked, like, a debuff, 
right? They were gonna like punish the shit out of you. Like you, you pick something, bro. Designer little bits cleansing, like you know, violets like smacking. It was real. It was rough out here for a minute for debuffers. Uh, but then Death Dealer Ray like came out, and even with Designer Lola bit, I don't know if you were here for her change. He detonates, so it doesn't actually count. Like, are you like you can bypass like oh, her so counting thing if you. Off. Yeah, if you if you do it fast enough, yeah. Oh, but like if I you S three, then she gains it. But like you know, it, the insinuation is that like if you S two yeah. and you S one, like it detonates first. Oh so, shit! You know. Okay. Yeah, sorry mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. So so that concludes our Death Dealer Ray talk. Welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, Welcome damn, you guys are still talking about DDR? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, well, I mean, I he just anything. does so many fucking things, right? Like, yeah. crazy you character. can't deal we'll with it. We'll see now skill set. I leave for like half an hour, come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then so, so his S2, right? We just finished talking about his S1. Yeah, yeah, we just, yeah his, we just finished his S1. So let's start talking. <laughs> Yeah, the, we, we, we went through a couple of iterations of uh, the most, just play the most busted thing in the game. Yeah, did you guys see the cat? Yeah, the, your cat walked in earlier. Yeah. Like, Down. <laughs> it's good, though, because I got a, I grabbed DDR from the... Oh, really? The Moonlight Connection thing? Oh, good stuff. It was, good stuff. Like, it was the only one I was missing from there. I was like, okay, sure, I'll grab this guy just to fill the, the journal. But I guess yeah, he's, uh, he's pretty he's insane now. And you know what sucks? They they did such a dick move. They came out with the um the selector, the Moonlight Selector thing for yeah. for those units before they buffed him. So he yeah. was like trash. It was like he's like one of the worst ones, like overall. Like you're not really gonna pick him. And then they're like, psych, we're gonna buff him now. He's the best one out of all of them, other than like Emma Lewis. <laughs> like, oh. Dude, and, and also the other now thing, Emma Corrick's uh, not even good anymore. Like really in the meta. Oh like, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, oh, like, he's gone yeah. out of the meta now. Kinda, yeah. I mean, every well, once in a while enough, you can kind of right? use him, but okay. Like like Connor, like debuffs are back. So like, what happens if you pick hand guy? Well into reset. lua knockwall and you just get recess and you're an idiot right so okay so we can't pick him there how about how about into solly well solly gets you know she's she's known like she's not that bad into him because you just strip his stuff over like two turns and then <laughs> yeah he starts eating debuffs again okay what yeah. about versus ray surely you cleanse all right well ray can just hold s3 with your s3 and then um, even though sure. still injuring you uh landing debuffs on you and if you have the audacity to press s3 guess what race stripping two, no contact <laughs> like, yeah. um, i think that we're gonna have to expect more characters to come out like notice that ions s3 can't be reset i think they're gonna make more yeah. characters with that stuff because they're like well we don't have anything to deal with this stuff so i mean honestly the thing is too is that like, why would you, like, in most cases, why would you even pick a hand, like, hand guy as a cleanser if you just have Lia, man? Lia doesn't you know what I mean? Right. Well, not, not, not quite the same. same. Like, you know, hand guy gives immunity and yeah. attack. But, but if you're, like, if you're afraid of debuffs, like, some people are afraid, you know, oh, my God, like, what happens? Like, if I get, like, a debuff this, debuff that. Lia, like, increases your cooldown up in case if, you know, for some reason you fight against, like, a knock wall. If there's like a really annoying debuff on your team, like she just cleanses it at the same time. Like it feels, it feels like we're going to hit that that tipping point where you have to be, like you have to have so much in your kit to like counteract the fact that like every other character can do what you're doing but better and also be a DPS and also you know be faster and also have 30k HP and also cr like it's crazy, it's crazy. Yeah. So so right now it just seems like if you want to play the game, um. Fuck Pray you, you have the ability, <laughs> capabilities to cleave because you don't have to deal with any of this bullshit. Um, you don't need insane stuff to cleave. You do need like you know certain units. I would say makes it yeah. a lot easier. Yeah. But uh, I think that it's not that bad. Like I, people kind of know. Like my speed gear is really nothing that impressive. Um, but you can kind of just brute force it. That's I mean that's the power of Zio. You don't need good gear. Yeah, I think yeah, one stupid. fast set in a Zeo, you could be a really good cleaver. Yes. That, that's literally me. I have one fast unit and Zeo, and then I use Moon Bunny as my other, like, character. And that's literally it. Like, I have three units built to be openers, basically, on my entire team. Like, I'm not even going to count Elagos, okay? He doesn't really <laughs> count, all right? Um, so I basically have three openers in the game, and then that's it. Like, and I just kind of draft, like, one of, like, five or six dps and that's kind of just how i play every single game and i'm like top 200 without like insane speed you really don't need insane stuff i think the other thing is that like it's 
like it used to be more of like a joke in the past but uh gabe you've also haven't been here since they introduced blind like blind draft where like now you don't have to people don't know who's playing against who oh like I it used that. to be like you get tar that like nowadays especially with like what jen is talking about yeah like this whole like you only need one unit to be fast like if someone picks a unit and you have no idea who's on the enemy team like you have to take that gamble like do you think that you're faster than this random person on the like on the ladders like ran like even if you want to use like a slower speed ran or like a slow flitica or something <clears throat> are you gonna are you gonna like are you him like are you gonna take that gamble to think that you know you can outspeed him like it's it's so rough like it it's not rough. No, you, would, you wouldn't get it, man. You, you don't understand. I'm slower than everybody, so I always know I'm going to lose. So, like, <laughs> I, you have to go in with that mentality. So, like, you're like, oh, maybe I'll be faster. Than I see, like, any character. I'm like, yeah, he's going to be faster. Like, <laughs> There's a hawk, bro. Like, oh, man, dude, not him, too. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, Wait, but, but then... yeah, I mean, you know, Ludwig. Oh, l missing Ludwig, though, like like they've been saying, though, is really, like, the death sentence. Like, that, that feels really bad. Like Ludwig yeah. is the thing is, is I, so I I can no Ludwig I can pretty confidently cleave my way to Emperor but like in order to go Legend like for no Ludwig it feels like I had I need three units built with perfect gear in order to make fat make up for the fact that I'm lacking one. Well, yeah. the Flitica Fumir cleave though, like I don't think you have to have Ludwig for it. Oh right? yeah, that's not a that's oh, not that's a, true. Yeah, that, that's not. So. Yeah, you just need a 300 Flitica. That all. one needs, yeah, you need two really fast critical chance <clears throat> necklaces, right? That's the crux yeah. of that composition. Your your Flid and um, Veronica. your Veronica, right, Kana? Like mm. needs to have at least twenty to twenty two on on uh, a critical chance single... necklace. Yeah, like, wait, yeah. you know how does that one yeah. work? <laughs> um, well, so, so you know how Fumir works, right, Gabe? Is Fumir the one that used to equip? Candles? You need to have a red and a green work. unit go before her, <laughs> and then she no. strips all your she strips all buffs off of the enemy and puts them to sleep, and defense breaks them for two turns. A two turn sleep is like like that's probably like a lot of people at first were like wow defense break that's crazy, putting something to sleep for two whole fucking turns they pretty much is, don't get to like play it, like if you thought yeah, we, like, we you were literally just, don't get to play like yeah, we were and, just and you can you know, reasonably build that ADR, unit if you're you triple less three hundred effectiveness so you can just brute force that into any unit in the game. Yeah, so the team is you always pick Flitica, Veronica, and then usually you either pick Fumir or DDR, and then like some dps like emil pavel or like emil ludwig or yeah, just yeah. somebody like that basically because you know when a whole team is defense broken they're all dead any yeah. aoe yeah. character will instantly kill an entire team like that and even if you don't you could just single like one by one kill them if you wanted because they're all asleep and defense broken so oh yeah Shit. the the other thing okay. that makes it kind of strong too gabe is that even if you aren't like you know 300 flitica or like 300 flitica and veronica like the draft normally, unless if it's changed, I haven't played it like in a minute. But like it, it pairs also with Green Sid, who is just not fucking. Oh yeah, yeah. This, this Earth. So then you have like two imprints in most cases, or at least one. And like, dude, some of the real like I like I used to like the person that like came, I think I'm like fairly certain the person the person that came up with it was Potato Balls, which I'm sure you know about. Potato, Potato Balls, Balls comes up with like half of all cleaves, basically. Yeah, basically. is like, he still cleaving at least? Yeah, yeah, I assume yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. Everybody nice. just literally just stalks him and copies everything he does. That's yeah. like half the ladder. Half the people mm -hmm. who hit legend just stare at whatever he does and then just spam his team. It's like, oh, this yeah. is yeah. what he's so you, okay. you have the mystery website now. So, so like, if you're a standard player, you're just refreshing AB all day. If you're a cleaver, you're refreshing potato balls to see what text mm -hmm. comes up. Oh, like, came right. up with. You have that website now that um, yeah, that you can exactly. See. Yeah. And then oh, if you're GG. a down player, right? You you stare at KHM and you see what the French are up to next, right? Like oh. those are like the three distinctions. Fuck yeah. right! I totally forgot that that even came out. I saw Nobody something. makes their own teams or anything anymore. Oh. That, that's the thing of the past, Gabe. Oh, yep. wake up from your two two year sleep. Yeah, wake, wake up, wake up, wake up, Grandpa! Hey, Time for you your history what? lesson. I'm okay with that because I coming back. I'm just gonna go stalk someone too now. You know, at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wait, yeah, wait, 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 it it, it 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 really rustles my jimmies like every time i'm i'm playing right like i like landy right and i'm i'd be playing like navy captain landy and then when somebody else picks it away you have people in twitch chat like oh you should pick this to try to fight this and, and then you know how, how am i supposed to break it to the poor guy like he's really trying to help me cook here but he's just naming things that don't work i might as well just pick malona because that's the only thing that matches up anywhere close to being able to like reliably beat navy captain landy yeah 
That's why nerfs are important. True. That's that's literally yeah. why nerfs exist ever in all video games. Like that that's so crazy, right? Like Navy Captain Landy, she does all that all the things that she does, and then she gives her team anti crit. Like I don't know if she had to do that. I think For if no she reason, didn't do yeah. that, she and still do more things than a standard character. God. Right? You, you count the amount of things in a character's kit. I'm pretty sure Navy Captain Landy without the anti-crit buff still has more than a character, right? Same with Yuffie. Like, did, did Yuffie have to hold CR by 50% and then combine with politics? Yeah, they, like, you they can't just CR add push? absurd like, passives. I, and then they have to add an insane passive to Emil Politis, which is you get half resource gain. Like, they, they just keep adding, like, these insane 50% passives. Like, look, anti-crit, 50%. CR boost, minus 50%. Minus 50% resource gain like it's just always having some mechanic of the game like maybe they're gonna make half soul gain as part of a passive next and like they, they just keep adding them right just... I, my hope is that they just don't have like this trend because they've done it now like they're like showing patterns like new new ranger character gets guiding light for free right mm, half new, stealth. new knight new knight character has elbrus built into kit right or like has like well, Aureus or like or admin, admin or something right. built into yeah. kit yeah. and i I kind of don't want to hit. I don't know what the meta would look like with it, but Built if every character has mage? adamant, uh, it would be funny if their trend for for mages well, was that they gave see, everyone two soul gave. birds. Wait, like, that would let me tell you about for... ML Elena. Oh my god! She, she yeah, she doesn't have a built-in yeah. book for free, but she has a what is the flan thing? Unseen observer. Unseen where observer. She yeah. She has this passive where she activates when you're cleaving your enemy. Yeah. She CR pushes herself and gives you ten souls. So you you put the actual unseen observer on her. So it's yeah. like you're having a book anyway. Mm -hmm. Damn. Like it's. I, I don't know. I don't know what the the game will look like. I do enjoy the fact that at least for for Ainz, like I know like maybe he needs like a little bit little bit more adjustment to like his kit. Mm -hmm. I do like the fact that they didn't just make him like a book abuser. Like, you know, like some random, like most mages that have come out recently, Gabe, have like some sort of super abusable, like soul burn. Soul burn, right? Yeah. And it's, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, Ainz, you, you land your uh, countdown on somebody and then you start soul burning his extra turns to count the extra turns. It's right? like, sure. Yeah. It's a different it's, kind of yeah. soul burn abuse. <laughs> I've, I felt like what they should have done is made it so his. I, I felt like they should have done it differently where his S1 like reduces the timer or something extra. Ooh, or like yeah, done that, something that like that, fun. like oh, that make some cool. mechanic like maybe increase the timer or something, but make it so like he decreases it by like two turns, and then any ally who hits it decreases it by one turn or something. So like you have all this stuff where you're like, it's you're not doing damage, but you're just hitting them to decrease that timer. So even your supports are like kind of DPSing. So like your main know. goal is to like play with the timer and try to like yeah yeah it's like a leafy yeah. but with the whole team like the whole squad. I don't know. That would, that would be an interesting kit, not gonna lie. Then you're not really, like, playing to kill the enemy with your own units. You're playing to play with Ein's, like, skill timer. And yeah, that's, like, how DDR works, honestly. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. well, that's true. All right, wait, you guys keep talking. I'm gonna go watch them real quick. Be back. Oh. Yeah. So um, how do you guys feel about, um... How do you guys feel about later tonight in a couple of hours? Um... <laughs> I, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna be spamming is... Politis every game. Yeah, uh, like or be fighting crazy. politis every game because politis is literally like i was looking at units i can pick and like my team comp and i was like wow this unit kind of just enables me to like do single target cleave stuff i have like a dps acid and other crap like that built and i feel like that <laughs> kind of stuff actually just works perfectly because like i'm just not afraid of any of the stuff i was before i feel like i don't know i feel like you can just abuse people so hard with this character yeah, yeah the, there's just nothing that by default counters what she does. I mean, even like regular politics, right? You 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 press a non-attack skill, suddenly regular politics is a threat. No, she's she's only climbing 15 CR, so if she's not fast enough, you're you're really not taking that much of an L yeah. off of your opener. So like I'm 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 just trying to juice my brain right now because I imagine when I get politics, like the rest of the draft will come to me, but if I don't, like, gonna... what am I doing to stop the bleeding? Because I don't want to lose yeah. too many points, right? <laughs> I'm also going to pick... Uh, I'm just going to pick, like, Zeo plus Emil Politis, I think, like, every single game. And then, I, I don't know, I might just pick, like, Genoa and regular Politis or something, and then my final pick could be, I don't even know, like, something. <laughs> I'm you just thinking something along dude. those lines. Okay, I, I know usually, like, the community cooks a little bit too hard, right? They're trying to think of, like, ideal scenarios but like 
if you have one book with politics guaranteed, assuming you're good enough to force a ban with your last pick every draft, like you just pick all the enrage units, like pick politics into Genua, and then he walks up with enrage, pops something, a Taiwan just stuns and defense breaks like three fourth of your opponent's team. Like how 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 are they supposed to come back? Yeah, from the this? thing that they kind of didn't remember too when they were designing this ML Poly character and like this whole like on command rage, most rage functions or most like characters that utilize rage get rage in some like psychopathic way and only after you've been enabled through like the enemy punishing you semi or like playing a little bit risky do you get to actually make use of the rage but they're like ah tell you dude just turn one man ah dude ignore er death break and like stun on a town ah dude just turn one like Genua just gets to use his S1 turn. Oh, dude, no problem. Like, you don't even need to take damage anymore. Like, what? <laughs> like, they just, like, kind of thought... I feel like they thought they were making Conqueror Lilius. Like, and it would be about as balanced as Conqueror Lilius. And then they just forgot everything that is, like, a consequence of playing I'm, I'm still a fucked ranger. Up thinking about this this eight high win synergy where you soul burn your politics they can't resist and then your eight high wins big mad and then they can't resist it's two soul burns for the fucking price of one wow yeah i think Wait, it'll be a pretty silly honestly <laughs> it's it's gonna be a big shit show I, i'm ready for tonight to to really fuck things up um, it might not even be good to be honest like yeah. it, it might just be a meme but i think it has that potential right yeah, and and I, I feel like at this point, um, I don't know if I speak for any of you guys, but like we we've all played our fair share of really competitive games. I'm kind of at the mindset where I'm down a clown, right? I'm sure guys in in chat like Vic Chung, he he's he's praying Politis doesn't just absolutely jack up the game, but I'm 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 out here like yo fuck up the game, like let me see what kind of chaos I can relish and let me see what kind of crazy ass content I get to make next. I wish they had just done that during the preseason, like. That breaking true, the game yeah. was like was the whole point like i'm i know i don't even know if this like aligns with the timeline of like them you know not having collabs and all the net marble guy stuff but like i i really think that every single season we're like dude e7's like final season you know end of season was a little bit crazy i was a little bit stressed out whatever Oh, but all good. Like now, preseason we can like mess around, we can fuck around. Like I'm gonna play like the stupid, like the stupidest draft ever, and then we just have like radio silence. They're like, "Hey guys, here's a new pack," and like, "Hey guys, here's like another side story that you know no one cares about," <laughs> and then like, "Oh, real season." Okay, now we're gonna make like a huge Drop change to the game. The like, like, what the fuck was the point? Like, we we had such a good trend for I think it was like a season or two or three or something. Where, like, during the preseasons, they were like, ah, we're going to fuck things up a little bit. And even though it wasn't, like, balanced, okay? Like, when we got, like, Sash and, like, you know, the Soul Weaver shit, I was like, oh, well, they're willing to experiment a little bit. It might not be, like, landing right now, but what if, you know, eventually they have to hit it. Like, they have to land once, right? And then they just stopped it. They just didn't do it. Like, the last thing that we, like, we landed on was, like, hey, guys, we want injury or, like, we want to reduce everyone's health by a significant amount if you, like, fight for long enough. And, like, that was their change for, like, what, two or three seasons or, like, four seasons, some yeah, shit like I, that. Yeah, I feel like there there is a lot of um, unexplored territory with 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 RTA's game design, um, especially now that I'm hanging out with Divine, who's a game designer. Um, I'm picking up a lot of influences, right? Uh, obviously the fact that you know they should be experimenting with more types of frenzy would be helpful but i think there's a whole aspect to in the custom mock lobbies there's a lot you can do like let us mess around with the custom mm -hmm. settings let mm. us mess around with frenzy let us decide how to fuck up the game right and then you just collect the data and see what works for what epic seven like as most, a whole like, right it feels like it's like the best yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because when you blanket apply a buff to an entire game, right? Do you, do you guys were you guys around when that happened? Like there was a fucking tournament that was going from week to week to week, and like the Chinese community put together a lot of resources to run one tournament, and that entire tournament got jacked up because Sash came in and suddenly everybody's trying to figure out how to play like one shot text with Rimuru and one shot text with like trying to outspeed people with Pavel and Ran and and like. Drafts got got changed overnight. Wait, what? That was crazy, by the way. When they gave Sash to everyone, dude. I remember yeah. Arby was like still big in the game, and like, dude, I had never seen so many people outspeed an Arby that gains one hundred percent 
combat readiness when he dies because you would just kill four targets and then like oop actually guys i'm 70 percent cr over the like over the you know the combat readiness bar like what <laughs> like you what are we yeah, even it was a period about? anytime you made a play you had to calculate the math um sash oh, things which is the passive man. effect wait when was but, this yeah. This was oh, right shit. after season six, right after Hua Young came yeah. out. It was my first legend season, oh. and then um, the Chinese community did an invitational. Yeah. Uh, where literally after the first week of matches, they started doing this. Oh. So like the immediate next week, I got fucked <laughs> by like just people just putting in like one shot text, and I was like, wow, this fucking blows. And then the next week it was gone, and then I started winning games again. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> this is the same yeah. Chinese tournament that runs uh, that ran all the time in the past. The um... yeah, Shanghai. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So they're still running that. Damn. Okay. But yeah, but it was like it was years ago, ago though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, yeah, I don't know if they still do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, know. I don't. I don't I'm know. glad they I'll, ran it. There have been a lot, lot of people that have like left the community too. Well, um, I mean, you know, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, you know uh, this is a little bit, uh, I guess I'm making up a topic here, but, um, about the whole, like, uh, Marguerite thing, you know, uh, yep. what is that? Oh, we're making up a topic. That, that's the winner <laughs> yes. of last year's E7 WC and it came yeah. out today. He was cheating. Oh, wow. Shocker cheating in Epic seven. Wow. It's Could almost it like 70% of all of legend sheets, like every season. Whoa. Wait, wait, okay. Okay. Wait. Okay, maybe update me on or enlighten me on say when you say cheat, do you mean like win trading cheating? He had so... four guys railing him in the ass while he was playing at the same time, you know? Yeah, yeah so, they were so giving him advice. when you play in any you're tournament to uh, for Smilegate, like, you're yeah. required to be in a Discord channel streaming your camera, right? Yeah. So, so it, you know, if we do that, we, we, we can't effectively can't cheat unless, you know, we want to pop up like Google google fucking workspace or like zoom or some shit right yeah but like obviously for chinese players like discord is not their main thing so they they have other programs they can just be on call with right yeah so obviously this is also like hearsay because it's made by one chinese streamer who invited a bunch of people essentially like if you can you imagine if you invited a bunch of the boys on you're like this this vow he guys a cheater cheated every time right Bro, I, I could have all the reasons to, like, defend myself. Like, I, bro, this, like, my word versus everybody else's, right? So, yeah. so still a, a good factor of hearsay, but there was supposedly a recording of, him, of I think, like, the other guy who was helping him recording his perspective of being in the same call and, like, seeing the game and him, pi he was piloting the guy. And huh. uh, that, that came out. And the reason it came out was because the guy who was helping him was, like, Hey, uh, just just give me a cut of your winnings, right? And then they're like, "All right, we'll shake on it," but they didn't agree on an amount, and that led to some disagreements. And uh, you know, that came out. Dude, today. that's such a dumb move to cheat and then stiff the guy yes, that dude, like, you, that helped you cheat. Do like it. that's much unreal. Oh my god! It's like apparently the guy was like, "Hey, maybe give me like ten percent of the winnings," and he was basically like three fifty. And the guy's like, "What?" Yeah, I, I, the guy was I, I, like, I got, "I got your tree fitty." The guy felt like so disrespected. He was like, "Bro, like, I'm not even asking for like that much. Like, I helped you win. Like, and he's like yeah. tree fitty." And he's I, like, I, "What?" I can eat McDonald's fuck? for a month, a month, maybe at most. Yeah, he's yeah, like, "I'll like, give you a Big Mac." Yeah. Like, all right. God damn. Um, yeah, but there, there's like a lot of. Uh, I don't. I don't even know if you were. Was there like any like rampant cheating like? Like back when you were around, Gabe. Bro, like, uh, I mean, yeah. um, hello? hello. Hey, Wait, Gabe. You ever? Three, hey, Gabe. Bro. Have you ever, ever heard of anyone who would cheat in Epic Seven? No one would whoa, do that. No. Right? Whoa, 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 Clearly, you know, clearly we've Happen never heard of anyone it. cheating. There's no shot. Like before <laughs> RTA came out, no one would cheat in Arena, right? Like no one yeah, would. Yeah, yeah. Arena. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, no, no one would oh, oh, cheat yeah. Nobody would cheat there. Oh, Jesus, yeah. bro. Who would Dude, that would we... be immoral. Who would Dude, want to other guys in the ass, you know? like. Dude. It, it's so bad, too, because, like, okay, I mean, I, I guess we're going to talk it a about it a little bit. Dude, I cannot believe... Like, you know, from when, so again, I don't know if you watched, uh, Gabe, but Jenna and I like casted the world cup like two years ago or something at this point. Oh, and like, it was a link for that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, you know, it was fine. Right. You know, they, I think they more prominently wanted to build up the, 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 you know, the, the players as personalities 
which is fine, right? You're trying to build story and you're like, oh my God. And like this player, he's so known for this. And like, we had their mm. profile photos and all that. Yeah. And like, you know, we had little like docs that were, would talk about like their personalities or whatever. And then next year, it's like, oh, the return of this guy. Like, and at first they're like still reusing like old assets. It's oh. like, oh, this guy is like, he's coming back. And then he would like show up on camera on stream. And it's like, who the fuck is that, bro? <laughs> oh, like, I remember like, what? this shit. Like, we were like, who the fuck is on left side? Like, is that a real fucking person? Like, no. what yeah, happened? They, 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 they just know, got a whole facelift, you know? it's In um, a year, you know, maybe... Con 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 you're just being racist. Obviously, oh, you've never no, seen enough no, Asian no, people, no, and you're just saying the, Asians the look the same, you know? No, Come on, people, shame like, on you, buddy. Dude, during the last World Cup, somebody said I was racist against Asians. I'm like, bitch, I'm Asian. Like, the fuck? Exactly. What I'm like, 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 what are you talking about? They are different fucking guys. You can't criticize anything. People just say you're racist, and then if you're like, I'm not, they're like, uh, well, then you're this thing instead. Like, I don't, people just have to make shit up. Dude, oh. it, it was so crazy. Like, I think when I saw it for the first time, I was like, oh, this, like, you know, this one person like uh okay like they look a little different i don't know maybe he started working out and then like the next person was just not even similar head shape like completely di like would have literally needed plastic surgery and like a in a, a completely new assumed identity to have even been the same same person and i sat there i was like hey, guys what's going on here like this I'm doesn't surprised. look that good Okay, so so maybe like, like I don't care as much anymore because like I don't stream much, you know, whatever. But like mm -hmm. I'm surprised that shit isn't vetted. It's like all the players that qualify, right? I'm surprised there isn't like oh, someone like a a CM or someone from Smilegate like vets it and be like, wait, you're not the same person. What happened here, right? It's just like I don't know. Like you would think like for running a tournament, you at least keep that shit the same or like kind of like vet that stuff, even even if they don't care, right? Even if they don't mm -hmm. care, it's for it's for the competitive the, integrity. Yeah, it's for the p competitive integrity for their own game, right? It's like, yeah, it, nobody will respect your game if you don't crack down on this kind of stuff. Like, and also you have like a tournament. Yeah. Nobody takes that seriously unless you take it seriously. Yeah, and. Yeah. Having shit like every time I fight the Wan P guy on ladder, I literally I'm like, hey, it's the cheater guy. It's the guy who cheated to get to the World Cup. Like I literally say it every time, like because <laughs> it's like the, these people are so shameless. Like I've never seen such shameless cheating in my life, ever. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, actually I have to check really quick. Oh shit. <laughs> Jenna's food. Oh, I mean, I, I don't know. But yeah. but like no, um, that that that's exactly what happens, right? Wait, E7 and, WC and... finals, no no one turning up was in. Yeah, so so what what happened was oh, yeah, I, yeah. I I actually spent a, a a fair chunk of time trying to get stories on all sides regarding this today. So the whole reason why they were not like at Korea in person, right? Yeah, is essentially the the final three were all invited. Winter Wish couldn't get his visa, and Marguerite literally just said, "Well, if we're not all gonna go, I don't want to go." and and Drew uh, and uh, Poopis was like, well, I'm not going to go alone and sit on the stage and play against some guy in the clouds, right? Like, yeah. That, that would just look stupid. Uh, if it was at least one other person, I'd be down to go. But so yeah. in the end, like nobody won. And they did this whole offline event with no actual contestants. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it'd be tough, right? Because the, the, whole, the whole technical cause was Winter couldn't get his visa. Yeah. So was it fair to DQ Winter on like short notice? Um, you, you know, that's a, that's a whole different discussion, right? Yeah. Damn. That's kind of sad, because, like, to be fair, you know, okay, I, I'm not going to lie this podcast. There's going to be a bunch of shit that goes down. Actually, should I end this part of the segment hey. before we, like, talk about random shit? You know, okay, let me end the podcast here, and then we'll continue talking about random shit as it goes, and we'll just, like, shoot the shit. <laughs> oh, okay. Hell yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, 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 thanks for recording. joining this podcast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's